Hello and welcome to another tutorial from Cami Page Boutique. I'm Brooke Tannehill and today I'm showing you how I created this rustic distress geo tumbler with inspirational decal. It's been a rough couple of years on all of us and this verse serves as a wonderful reminder to not hold back and keep moving forward. Not to mention, I have been on a pink kick lately, so this has the perfect color scheme. As always, all the products I used will be listed in the description below, and you may even find a coupon code or two that saves you some coin. Also, join our exclusive Facebook group where you can take advantage of upcoming freebies and giveaways that you aren't going to want to miss. So without further hesitation, let's go ahead and get started. For this cup, I started with a fully prepped and sanded 30 ounce fatty tumbler from Parish Tumblers, spray painted it a candy pink, which is a light pink color, and then we moved into applying our glitter utilizing the epoxy method. So what I like to do, and I didn't film this part, is I like to heat my cup with a heat gun, just do it for like a quick 30 seconds, just to get the cup warm, and then I just apply a super thin layer of epoxy that I will use as the adhesive for applying my glitter. Now, I typically use the least amount of epoxy possible, but since we're going to be using some chunky glitters, I did apply just a tad bit more so that I really get some great adhesion of the chunkier glitters and really allow for all of the spirals that we'll be adding to stick really well, but also blend if needed. Now, I kind of alluded that we'll be adding spirals, but what I like to do is focus on a corner and just take the shaker and just move it around the cup. And a lot of times I try and have the top of the spiral and the bottom of the spiral end in a straight line. So the glitter I'm using here is called Golden Rose from Bougie Glitter Boutique, and I'm just slowly spiraling around the cup. I like to use a chunkier mix to start and then alternate glitters between a chunkier and a finer cut just to add that little bit of dimension that you want when you're working with these kind of spirals and for this design of this cup. After I was done with the golden rose, I grabbed Aphrodite and I came in right next to the first glitter that we laid down. And I like to overlap my colors by like just a quarter of an inch to really get that nice blend going. After the Aphrodite, it was time for Persian Pearl, which I'm applying right now. And I just love how all of these colors play really nice together. And then I definitely grab the Pink Flutter, which is all of the glitters I'm using are from Bougie Glitter Boutique, and apply it again over the, just about a quarter inch over of the glitter I used just previously. Now, if you feel more comfortable, you can obviously apply your glitters on your turner. I just like them not to be super perfect. so. I like to do it by hand and kind of let a little bit more of the colors move and give more of an organic feel. But by all means, do what makes you the most comfortable. Finally, I grab Sugar Plum Fairy and I just go in between the last two glitters that were there. So the top one being Aphrodite and the bottom one being the Pink Flutter and just fill in that spot with the Sugar Plum Fairy. I just love this color. It has kind of a purple shift to it with some silver flake to it. And I just, I think it's absolutely beautiful. And I'm showing you the, um, the whole swirl effect there. And then I come in and just use the Sugar Plum Fairy again, just to cover the whole bottom of the cup. You could honestly use any color that you wanted to. I just thought that this color really pulled all the different glitters that we're using together and I like what the final result looks like. I let that dry for about two hours and then this cup needed two coats of epoxy until it was smooth and then it was time to start the sanding process. I like to start with the rim of my cup first. So I use a corded Dremel with a 120 grit flap wheel. Again, that is the Dremel brand as well. And I will link those down below. But I just like to take my time and expose that little sliver of stainless steel. If you've watched my previous tutorials, I'm so sorry this is redundant, but it's super important in the overall integrity of your cup. Exposing that stainless steel allows something for your future coats of epoxy to adhere to and it prevents any water or fluids from getting in behind your design and causing the epoxy to peel. So this is a super important step. Then I follow it up with a sanding block. This is either 120 or 80 grit sanding block. And I just smooth out any of the rough edges that might have been created from the flap wheel. So just make it super nice and super even so you don't have any sharp bits. And then I grab my orbital sander. Now you're probably like, geez, lady, can you do any more sanding? But I do this so that when we come in with our future coats of spray paint, you have a nice even surface for the spray paint to 
go over or adhere to. Because when you're doing any kind of distressing or peekaboo, if you have problems in your spray paint, you will see it when you go into your future coats of epoxy. So this is an 80 grit sandpaper on my orbital sander. And what I'm doing is I'm just moving around the cup, knocking down any high spots, but also smoothing out the layers of epoxy so that I've got a nice, even, smooth surface for my spray paint to adhere to. So you're just gonna rock the cup back and forth, get it smooth, and then I flip it and I start to work on the bottom of the cup as well. Now, once you're happy with it, I would highly recommend going in with another coat of epoxy. I did not do that and I learned my lesson with the spray paint and I went into distressing it, that it was harder to tell if I had removed all of the spray paint that I wanted and that there wasn't any residue left. So after you get the cup perfectly smooth, I would go into a coat of epoxy before spray painting so that way you can have visibility into if you've removed all the spray paint. But before that, don't forget your bottoms. A lot of times, a lot of people struggle with getting their bottom smooth. This is just one of the ways that I've done it. You can do obviously do it with like a sanding block by hand, but when you have those really rough kind of chunky mixes, I found that that's the fastest and easiest way to do it. Now, learn from my mistakes and go into a coat of epoxy before this. But what I'm doing here is I'm laying down a spot that will allow for a peekaboo for our decal that we will be applying. So. When I did the design, I did two offsets, one of the offset of the original decal that will be in vinyl. But what this one's going to do is allow a placement for a peekaboo of the glitter to show through around the decal instead of the distressing. So it'll become more prominent or evidence further on, but I really wanted to do that for this design. And then also to make the distressing process easier, I'm applying two strips here of painter's tape and I'm leaving them on the cup when I spray paint it. The reason why I'm doing this is because it's going to make the removal of the painting process easier. Um, so I'm not having to remove as much paint. So just apply your painter's tape just randomly around the cup. I also like to have the distressing marks go around the bottom. So I just did this one here to where it's half on bottom, half on top, and just use your X-Acto knife just to cut some just kind of rugged, uh, I don't even know what to call the shape, but just some rugged little shapes. Remove the excess painter's tape and you'll see that when you go to apply your spray paint and you'll easily be able to remove it and it just makes the distressing process easier. So just continue around the cup. Make sure to also put some distressing marks in the middle of the cup, not just the top and bottom, because it just gives it some nice design elements that doesn't just make it too uniform when you go to distress, because if it's uniformed, or if it's distressed uniformly, that's not what we're going for. We're looking for just kind of that weathered, rustic look. Once you have all of your painters taped down in the design you want, it's time for spray paints. Now, I'm choosing to do three different color spray paints, but you could do two, you could do one. It's just whatever design you want to go with for your cup. The first color I used is a uh, prickly pear from Rust-Oleum 2X spray paint. And I just did one coat, let it dry for about 45 minutes. Then I came in with candy pink again and did just another coat right over the top of it. Granted, you do want to let it dry. And then finally, I just came in with a white gloss spray paint, let that dry, and then it's time to remove the painter's tape and decal. When you're removing the tape, you don't have to be as careful as you typically do with other peekaboos because if you remove the tape um, and scratch it, it's fine because we're going to be taking off a lot of the paint anyway. And so if you have tiny scratches, we can definitely camouflage it with the um, acetone and alcohol that we will be using. Now, one thing I do want to call out here is I didn't let this fully cure. I highly recommend that you remove the tape and do the distressing with the spray paint all in the same day. I have learned my lesson very, very well by leaving the spray paint on for too long and it becomes an act of God to try and get the paint removed. So just, just try and <laughs> budget your time to where you can do this all in one day because I promise you're gonna thank me in the long run. 
Now, I know you can't tell this, but I have a shop towel, and this is like a low lint shop towel, and in the dark blue container is straight acetone. So this is just acetone that I got from like Lowe's or Home Depot. Actually, I think I might have got this from Amazon, so if I did, I'll link it below. And you want to start off with the acetone when you start distressing. The reason for that is, is acetone's going to really take off the most paints and give you the biggest bang for your buck as you're starting to distress. So you can see there, it's easily coming up. And what you wanna do is just start to take off enough paint to where you're seeing really all three colors. So I wanted to see the dark pink, I wanted to see the light pink and the white. And so you can really see that around the edges and just start to work your way around. And then once you're happy and you feel like you've got the distressed spot about 90% there, you actually wanna grab 91% alcohol. And what this does is it will clean up any of the excess spray paint or any of like any of the residue that's left over. Now I do switch over to a coffee filter to see if it works any better. And I mean, it kinda does. I think you could use either or and be happy with it. So if you have shop towels, use shop towels. If you have culty filters, Filters, use coffee filters. The only reason why I wanted to try this is because I was getting a little bit of the fibers from the blue shop towel in the distressing and I wanted to prevent that. So just move around the cup and do the different distressing spots that you laid down with your painter's tape. But what I wanted to show you here is how I did the words. So I, you could obviously leave nice crisp lines for the offset of the words that you you're doing or like the decal that you're doing. But here I wanted to really bring your eye to the decal because of the importance of what it was saying and the fact that it was scripture. I really wanted that to be the focal point. So I started with just alcohol to see if it would do enough and it, it just didn't. Um, you'll see here that I did decide to stick with the coffee filters because it was working better. But I really just came in with some more acetone um, and alcohol, just kind of switching back and forth to get it to where I I wanted to one thing I will say though is that this whole cup like especially the spray painting thing I know I emphasize this but for the next steps which I'm showing you right here you really want to do this as soon after you do the distressing because of the look I was going for so what we're going to be doing here and I promise this will all make sense in a second is that we are going to be applying a bunch of foil flakes so this is pink from just pink flakes from Woody's goodies and I used my purple blue stick from like I, this is from Amazon too so I'll link them below but I just used my glue stick and then came in with the pink flakes and applied them over the top of the glue stick now the reason why I'm saying this needs to be done right after the distressing is because if you've worked with foil flakes before you know that when you come in with your chip brush which I will do in just a second so you apply the the whole methodology is that you apply it over the glue that you've laid down then come in with your chip brush that you see right here and you'll notice that there are just different pieces of the foil that just kind of scatter all over the place so I wanted this on purpose so not only am I applying the flakes to the glue stick that I'm laying down I'm also wanting the other flakes or the little fragments that are coming off of where I've laid it down to stick to the spray paint. So that's why I really wanted to do this right after I distressed because the, paint, the spray paint's still a little bit gummy and it's worked for a great adhesive for the rest of the foil fragments to adhere to. So all you're going to want to do is just move your way around the cup and apply the flakes in any which way that you see here. So I first started off with some like little itty bitty sections, but it wasn't really the way I wanted the cup to go. So I definitely came back in afterwards and added more. Something else that's pretty cool about this technique and I kind of lucked out is because we removed all the spray paint and the residue from the spots that reveal like the geode or like the glitter underneath, I found that the foil flake fragments don't stick to it. It really just only adhered to the spray paint. So it allowed the beautiful glitter underneath to really, really shine through and give that full rustic distressed look I was really going for with this geode. 
Now, I know I mentioned just a little bit ago how I came in with more flakes, but I also wanted to show you guys. And I think that this decision really made the whole look come together because if you look closely, you can see some of the foil fragments that are sticking to the spray paints. But with the addition of more with the glue stick and then more of like the rubbing with the chip brush, it really, really came together. Like it really pulled the whole look and actually the sim symbolism, <laughs> sorry, words, um, the symbolism of the cup come together. Because the reason why I chose the decal, I chose this look and everything that's kind of all of the pieces is because I really wanted to show that even through some of the darkest times, you can still come through and beauty is everywhere around you. So that's what the whole symbolism behind the cup is. Sorry to get sappy, but that's really, really, really what I I was thinking when I put this whole design together. Now it's time for the decal. I cut the offset with a pink foil vinyl that I will link below, but because I wanted to make sure to get the placement of this pretty spot on because you do have the glitter offset, what I did is I just cut off a tiny bit of the backing behind the vinyl and adhered it to the cup. This way I don't have any random spots like sticking that you don't want to, especially with the full size of this decal. I really felt like it helped me really get the placement right before I moved into the next steps. So I really recommend this. I know a lot of people call it the hinge method and it was perfect for getting the vinyl laid down. Then I just used white Oracle 651 and I used the same method with the hinge method by just cutting off a slight bit of the vinyl backing and then just rolling it over the top of the decal that we had already laid down. So I found that this really helps me to be successful when I'm doing these bigger decals and I highly recommend it for you guys if you decide to make this design. And look at how beautiful it is. I absolutely love it, sorry. <laughs> Now, if you know me, you know I love to seal me some vinyl, especially because the size of this decal, the fact that we used a foil vinyl underneath the Oracle, I really recommend sealing this. So you just apply a pretty thin coat of the poly acrylic, and then you let that dry for about a full 45 minutes before you move into your final coats of epoxy. I mixed up 15 milliliters of a little extra ink epoxy and applied it to the cup. Um, this cup, just because of the size of the decal, I did do two final coats over the whole thing just to make sure that I had great coverage and that it really brought the sparkle of all the glitter and all the different foil elements together. And then this baby was done. Um, this was a super, super meaningful and symbolic cup and I hope that you love it just as much as I do. Of course, it is my token zoom in shot, but I absolutely love this cup. I hope it inspires you to try something similar or even replicate this exact design. As always, thank you for watching. It really means a lot to me. If you like this tutorial, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you can see future videos. You can also ring the bell so you are notified of all future cup making goodies. Thank you again. I love you guys. Bye.